South Korea continues to mourn following the tragic events that occurred in Itaewon last weekend. Members of the public are also continuing to gather and pay their respects at memorial sites. Our Shin se -byok joins us live from Seoul Plaza, one of many memorial altars set up in the South Korean capital. se -byok, still an extremely somber atmosphere there. Hello, Mark. As you said, I'm here at Seoul Plaza. It's a bit chilly out here, but people continuously come to this site in the middle of work during their lunchtime to pay respects to the victims who died from the tragic incident that happened in Itaewon last Saturday. Uh, so far as of 5 p.m. Wednesday, a total of over 70,000 people have paid their respects to the victims at memorial sites set up in Seoul's 25 districts, including the one in Itaewon and this place. Uh, yesterday alone, over 20 thousand people offer their condolences at memorial sites in the capital. Um, visitors include both Koreans and members of Korea's international community, with foreign nationals among those who lost their lives. And I talked to some of them. This is something that should have never happened. It's heartbreaking. I hope the government establishes a social system to ensure such a tragedy isn't repeated. It's really sad and it's really devastating and I'm, I'm coming here today and seeing, you know, people pay their respects is really nice and really comforting. Um, and, you know, so I hope this is something that we can hopefully obviously prevent uh, so that nothing like this repeats in the future. Yeah, that seems to be the way most people are thinking um, at the moment that something has to be put in place to ensure that something as dreadful as this never happens again. Uh, Sebio, we must point out as well that, as with other days during this period of national mourning, we have been seeing uh, a number of visits by high-profile uh, visitors, not only here from South Korea, but also international guests as well. Right. So a number of public officials and public figures, including President Yoon Song yeol and Seoul Mayor Oh Se-hoon, were among those who visited the site. And in fact, President Yoon made his fourth visit earlier this morning, about an hour after altar opened. And earlier, he said he would visit here every day until they close. Uh, quite a few ambassadors to South Korea, including those from Taiwan and Indonesia, also visited to pay their respects in the past few days. Also today, another renowned Japanese politician, vice president of the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan and formal prime minister Taro Aso, who's on a visit to South Korea, also came here to offer his condolences. Well, visits such as these are quite meaningful as the tragedy took place in an area considered by many people to be Seoul's international hub. The memorial altar at the site will be open until Saturday between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., but further information on site locations and opening times are available online. Okay, so if we know for sure that the memorial altar there at least will be open for at least the next couple of days for people to go along and visit and pay their respects um, if they have time. Have the authorities provided us with any kind of updates regarding the number of people who died on that tragic night last Saturday and uh, in terms of the people who were injured? Well, as of 6 a.m. this morning, the, na the number of death toll has remained unchanged at 156, and the figure includes some 26 foreign nationals. And of the fatalities, about two-thirds are women. Uh, according to the government this morning, the funerals of 128 people, including seven foreign nationals, have taken place, and eight more funerals will take place today. The government says it will take some time to complete the funeral process for foreign nationals, considering different cultures and the cost of transporting remains. As for the injured, one more person was added to the list, bringing the total to 173, and 33 are reportedly in serious condition, and that's all for now, but I'll be back for 2 p.m. newscast. Back to you, Mark.